There were several controversial items that came before the General Assembly this year, many of which kind of fell in line with um, with votes that had happened before. So, for example, the Israel-Palestine vote, um, the Assembly voted 266 to 116 to approve one of the most controversial items, INTO2, um, which declared that the Peace USA recognized the laws and policies and practices of the Israeli government regarding the Palestinian people as, quote, fulfilling the international legal definition of apartheid. And for some, they criticize the PCUSA for taking a stance that towards Israel that seems to be anti-Semitic, um, saying that it will hurt interfaith relations, while others at the assembly spoke um, in supporting human rights of the Palestinian people. Another item that came before the assembly um, was on climate change um, and divesting from five oil and gas companies that the MRTI, which is the um, mission responsibility through investment um, committee, worked with for many years with Chevron, ExxonMobil, Marathon Petroleum, Phillips 66, and Valero. Um, and uh, they're selectively divesting from those companies after a long period of corporate engagement. But they also affirmed um, through ENV09 that working in the fossil fuel industry is a necessity for many and assured Presbyterians that divestment is not a condemnation or judgment on their choice of employment. Um, this has been a long time um, effort of the MRTI and um, that has resulted in the divestment of um, the denominations, financial resources um, from those companies. Um, there was also um, some things that were very timely. Um, one of the committees, um, VIOL07, dealt with um, declaring an end to gun violence, um, an effort for the next 10 years from 2022 to 2032, asking um, the Presbyterian Mission Agency to develop tools for um, for advocacy as well as for um, for education around gun violence and and culture, um, and also to um, direct the MRTI in VIOL 11 to divest from um, from some companies that publicly sell guns. Um, in their in their businesses um, so they're going to um, not divest from them immediately but begin that process of corporate engagement with companies such as walmart and dick sporting goods and kroger's and three other companies um, to work with them on that issue around the issue of family leave the assembly proposed an amendment to the peace usa co constitution to have minister's terms of call uh, include at least 12 weeks of paid family leave. And that would cover not only the birth of a child or fostering or adopting a child, but um, possibly caring for an ill or disabled family member or healing after the loss or tragic event. Um, this proposed change needs to come to the majority of presbyteries for approval. And so we will be seeing that. Another item that came before the assembly um, was in regards to immigration, and the assembly voted 340 to 25 to declare the PCUSA a sanctuary and accompaniment church. What that means is that um, there's some presbyteries that accompany immigrants by offering housing and legal assistance, going with them to immigration hearings and other appointments and trying to get people released from detention. And there's also other churches that are working kind of on another level um, with this specific language of being a sanctuary and accompaniment church. And so there will be some materials and things that will be developed um, around that as well. Um, there were um, other um, kind of uh, groups that have been formed. So there's a new GLBTQIA Equity and Advocacy Committee. Um, there's also a, a special committee that will be formed. Um, it's actually going to be a commission um, uh, that will act to merge both the Presbyterian Mission Agency, and, which is PMA, um, and 
the Office of General Assembly, which is OGA, into one single agency. It's basically restructuring everything at the top level of our denomination into one agency. Um, they're looking at ways to kind of streamline things, but also help those groups work better together. Um, and so one of the things that also is coming with that is the merging of their budgets and trying to look towards a model for funding that just doesn't rely on per capita as its main funding system. So speaking of per capita, there's some changes coming up, um, and that also means an increase with some of these new groups and educational opportunities and, um, you know, there's also savings, but there is going to be an increase the current amount for per capita is currently $8.98 per member. That is going to be going up by $0.87. Cents. It's a 9.6% increase. So in 2023, it will be $9.85 per member. It will then drop $0.05 cents, um, for 2024 to $9.80. Um, one of the smaller ways that um, money was uh, proposed to be saved is by continuing to keep General Assembly as a hybrid. This year, uh, the committees met in person and the Assembly met online. For next General Assembly, which will be in 2024, it will be held in Salt Lake City. Committee meetings will be online and plenary or the large assembly will be in person. So those are some major changes that are coming up. Um, and there's also some things that will be in the works for a longer period of time. Um, a group uh, will be looking at the possibility of forming a new uh, confession. There's also um, a lot of smaller affinity groups that are, are being formed. And so if you want to serve on any of those different groups, you can go um, to the information about General Assembly and look at joining um, one of those committees or nominating someone for one of those committees as well.